And speaking of faith and church, eto na siguro yung isa sa pinaka-controversial na theory na meron tayo ngayong modern era. ba? Diba? So, yung theory ni Charles Darwin. So, we're done with the Copernicus, uh, Copernican Revolution and we will now proceed with this new revolution. Uh, Charles Darwin was a British naturalist who po- proposed the theory of biological evolution by what we call natural selection. So, Darwin defined evolution as descent with modification. The idea that species change over time, give rise to new species, and share a common ancestor. So, the mechanism that Darwin proposed for revolution is natural selection. Because resources are limited in nature, organisms with heritable traits that favor survival and reproduction will tend to leave more offspring than their peers, causing the traits to increase in frequency over generations. And natural selection causes populations to become adapted or increasingly well-suited to their environments over time. So, natural selection depends on the environment and requires existing heritable variation in group. And to know more about the foundations of Darwin's work, pause this video first and watch this video located in your module 2 video discussion folder and the Charles Darwin and Evolution link. The popularity and support of Darwin's first book gave rise to what we call Darwinism, which is a theory of biological evolution. So this was coined by Thomas Henry Huxley. And uh, it says there that all species arise and develop through natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the organism's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. At dahil nga doon sa ideology ni Darwin, nagkaroon ng tinatawag na social Darwinism. So social Darwinism is a loose set of ideologies that emerged in the late 1800s in which Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection was used to justify certain political, social, and economic views. So, social Darwinists believe in the survival of the fittest. So, ito yung pinaka-summary ng uh, social Darwinism. The idea that certain people become powerful in society because they are innately better. Diba? So, social Darwinism has been used to justify imperialism racism, eugenics, and social inequality at various times over the past century and half. Now, pause the video and uh, watch the video uploaded in Module 2, Video Discussion, and the Social Darwinism link. So, as you have seen in the video, social Darwinism appeared in varying forms around the world for decades. By the early 1900s, the influence of social Darwinism could be seen in the United States' systematic racism, compulsory sterilization laws, social welfare systems, and the field of criminology. And they know that scholars are divided on how social Darwinist ideology may have led directly to Adolf Hitler's rise within the Nazi party. So, it was said that uh, Adolf Hitler has this uh, social Darwinism in his mind when he proposed uh, the socialist um, uh, reform in Germany. So bioethical debates also in modern genetic science still hark back down to Darwin's evolutionary theories and their implications. So multiple and incompatible interpretations of social Darwinism continue to exist in scholarly and popular sources. Social Darwinism remains a complex intellectual concept that risks being distorted or misapplied to biological theories of the human condition. So maraming mga debates na uh, pwede tayong uh, pag-usapan when it comes to social Darwinism. No, walang nagsasabi na absolute truth itong theory na to at uh, wala rin naman nagsasabing mm, so uh, mali din ito no uh, entirely okay so debatable yung mga uh, facts na stated sa darwinism or dun sa librong sinulat ni darwin regardless whether we believe the uh, theory of darwin or not no uh, itong sigurado naging malaking impact nito sa ating uh, paniniwala regarding the origin of human species now, aside from uh, Copernican and Darwin Revolution or Darwinian Revolution, we also have what we call Freudian Revolution. Simon Freud was the first psychoanalyst and a true pioneer in the recognition of the importance of unconscious mental activity. 
So his theories on the inner workings of the human mind, which seemed so revolutionary at the turn of the century, are now widely accepted by most schools of psychological thought. In 1896, Freud coined the term psychoanalysis. And for the next 40 years in his, of his life, he worked on thoroughly developing its main principles, objectives, techniques, and methodology. According to Simon Freud, human personality is complex and has more than a single component. In his famous psychoanalytic theory, Freud states that personality is composed of three elements known as the id, the ego, and the superego. These elements work together to create complex human behaviors. So let's talk about the Eid first. The Eid is very important early in life because it ensures that an infant's needs are met. So lahat daw tayo ay pinanganak na merong Eid. Because if the infant is hungry or uncomfortable, they will cry until the demands of the Eid are satisfied. So these are our basic human needs. So young infants are ruled entirely by the id. There is no reasoning with them when these needs uh, demand satisfaction. Now, now, imagine trying to convince a baby to wait until lunchtime to eat their meal. No? So ang gagawin lang ng bata, umiyak ng umiyak kasi gutom, gutom siya. Diba? So hindi niya iniisip kung maingay siya o anong nagiging reaksyon ng mga taong nakapalibot sa kanya. Basta nintindihan niya, uh, pag gutom siya, Ang gagawin niya, iiyak siya para bigyan siya ng pagkain. The id requires immediate satisfaction. And because the other components of personality are not yet present in the infant, no, so the infant will cry until the needs are fulfilled, as I mentioned. Okay? So, kapag naman uh, habang tumatandaw daw tayo, ang mga tao, sabi ni Simon Freud, no, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na ego no, because of our experiences in life. So, the ego operates based on the reality principle, which strives to satisfy the id's desires in realistic and socially appropriate ways. So, sabi ko kanina, kapag bata tayo, gutom tayo, iyak lang tayo, tiba. Pero habang tumatanda tayo, no, nare-realize natin na kapag gutom tayo, ano kaya yung tamang reaction, lalo na kung nakapalibot yung mga tao sa atin. So, doon pumapasok yung ego. The reality principle weighs the costs and benefits of an action before deciding to act upon or uh, or abandon impulses. So, imagine that you are stuck in a long meeting at work. You find yourself growing increasingly hungry as the meeting drags on. So, while the id might compel you to jump up from your seat and rush to the break room for a snack, the ego guides you to sit quietly and wait for the meeting to end. Because in our mind, that's the right thing to do. ba? Kasi you're in the middle of the meeting. So kung id lang ang pakikinggan ninyo, no, lalabas kayo kagad ng meeting room at kakain. Pero dahil meron ka ng ego, no, maghihintay ka kasi ayaw mong mapahiya or mapagalitan sa mga kasama mo. Okay? At syempre, kung merong id at saka ego, meron ding tinatawag na super ego. The super ego holds the internalized moral standards and ideals that we acquire from our parents and society. No, So this is our sense of right and wrong. The super ego has two parts. First is what we call conscience. So the conscience includes information about things that are viewed as bad by parents and society. These behaviors are often forbidden and uh, lead to bad consequences, punishments, or feelings of guilt and remorse pag ginawa natin. Okay? Uh, yung pangalawa naman, maliban sa conscience, ay yung ego ideal. The ego ideal includes the rules and standards for behaviors that the ego aspires to. So, when talking about the id, the ego, and the superego, it is important to remember that these are not three separate entities with clearly defined boundaries. These aspects are dynamic and always interacting to influence an individual's overall personality and behavior. So a person who has a good ego strength can effectively manage these pressures, while a person with too much or little ego naman, strength can be unyielding or disruptive na. 
So hanggang ngayon, yung mga idea ni Freud ay ginagamit pa rin sa psychology at saka sa psychotherapy. So nakikita natin dito yung uh, dahilan kung bakit ang isang tao ay nagagawa niya itong mga bagay na to. And Freud influenced other individuals who became some of psychology's greatest thinkers like Anna Freud, yung anak niya, Alfred Adler, Carl Jung, Eric Erikson, Melanie Klein, and Otto Rank. Anna Freud created the field of child psychoanalysis and her work contributed greatly to our understanding of child psychology. So she also developed uh, different techniques to treat children. Freud noted that children's symptoms differed from those of adults and were often related to developmental stages. So yung uh, uh, anak ni Simon Freud, si Anna Freud, ipinagpatuloy niya lang yung sinimulan ng kanyang ama. No? Uh, now, how about uh, Alfred Adler? Adler's theory suggested that every person has a sense of inferiority. No, So, from childhood, people work toward overcoming this inferiority by striving for superiority. So, Adler believed that this drive was the motivating force behind human behaviors, emotions, and thoughts. While Erickson's stage theory naman of psychosocial development generated interest and research on human development through the lifespan. An ego psychologist who studied with Anna Freud, Erickson expanded psychoanalytic theory by exploring development throughout life, including events of childhood, adulthood, and old age. Melanie Klein, on the other hand, extended and developed Freud's understanding of the unconscious mind, analyze how children play. So, si Otto Rank naman developed theories of will and birth trauma, emphasize free will, relationships, and creativity. Okay, isa sa mga interesting na na-influensahan ni Freud ay si Carl Jung. No? He is a Swiss psychologist and psychiatrist who founded analytic psychology in response in some aspects to Freud's psychoanalysis. So, proposed uh, concepts of extroverted and introverted personality. At meron siyang tinatawag na archetypes and collective unconscious. And he is influential in psychiatry, study of religion, literature, and related fields. Carl Jung was originally a supporter of his mentor, Simon Freud. The relationship eventually uh, fractured over Jung's criticism of Freud's emphasis on sexuality during development, which led Jung to develop his own psychoanalytic approach known as analytical psychology. While Jung agreed with Freud that the unconscious played a men, uh, an important role in personality and behavior, he expanded on Freud's idea of the personal unconscious to include what Jung called the collective unconscious. And he defined uh, the four major archetypes. So archetype is an original model or type after which other similar things are pattern. So, si Jung ay gumamit ng mga patterns or symbolism. So, here's a good illustration of his uh, four major archetypes. The first is the persona. So, the persona is how we present ourselves to the world. The word persona is derived from a Latin word that literally means mask. So, nakikita nyo dito sa picture dito na merong babaeng may iba't ibang masks, di ba? Kasi ganito daw tayo. It is not a literal mask, however, no? The persona represents all of the different social masks that we wear among various groups and situations. So, it acts to shield the ego from negative images. According to Jung, the persona may appear in dreams and take different forms. So, kasi yung nagiging... Uh, personality natin ay nakadepende minsan kung sino yung uh, taong kaharap natin, di ba? So, kung halimbawang itong taon na to ay kaibigan mo at pwede mo namang, pwede kang maging normal sa kanya, uh, pwedeng may, may pakita mo yung uh, totoong personality mo. Pero minsan, pagka hindi natin kilala o strangers yung kausap naman natin, hindi tayo kaagad nagpapakita ng ating totoong personality. Gumagamit kumbaga tayo ng mas to hide our uh, pers- personality. No, lalo na kung inferior tayo. Now, the shadow is an archetype naman that consists of the sex and life instincts. So, the shadow exists as part of the unconscious mind and is composed of repressed ideas, weaknesses, desires, instincts, and shortcomings. The shadow forms out our attempts to adopt 
uh, to cultural norms and expectations. It is this archetype that contains all of the things that are unacceptable not only to society but also to one's own personal morals and values. It might include things such as envy, greed, prejudice, hate, and aggression. So this archetype is often described as the darker side of the psyche. No, representing wildness, chaos, and the unknown. These latent dispositions are present in all of us. Dao, sabi ni Jung. Although people sometimes deny this element of their own psyche and instead project it on to others. Okay? So after naman nun, meron siyang tinatawag na anima. So the anima is a feminine image in the male psyche. At yung animus naman is a male image in the female psyche. Okay? So, yung bawat male daw ay meron daw feminine side. At yung bawat ano naman daw, female, ay merong male side nila. Okay? So, the anima or animus represents the true self rather than the image we present to others and serve as the primary source of communication with the collective unconscious. So, Jung believe that psychological changes as well as social influences contributed to the development of sex roles and gender identities. So, Jung suggested the influence of the animus and anima archetypes were also involved in this process. According to Jung, the animus represents the masculine aspect in women while the anima represented the feminine aspect in man. Uh, or in men, like I said before. So, the self naman, yung last na archetype natin, the self is an archetype that represents the unified unconsciousness and consciousness of an individual. So, this is like the totality of our personality, no? Or, or of our psychology. Jung often uh, represented the self as a circle, square or mandala. Creating the self occurs through a process known as individuation in which the various aspects of personality are integrated. So, Jung believed that this harmony between the unconscious and the conscious mind could lead to psychological problems. Bringing these conflicts into awareness and accommodating them in conscious awareness was an important part of individuation process.